What we're now going to do is we're actually going to demonstrate the techniques of surgical abortion in all three trimesters. The first demonstration we're going to do is the most common type of an abortion. That's the first trimester suction DNC. For illustration purposes, we have this black cloth up here, which is going to re represent our operative field and where we'd be working. Just so you know ahead of time, you're not going to see any blood. You're not going to see any baby parts. What you're going to see is the reality of what an abortion actually is, and you'll be able to put what I'm doing together with the images that you've already seen of the babies at the different stages of development on the inside. But the first demonstration is for the first trimester abortion. So this would be done anywhere between 5 weeks and 12 weeks. This is a speculum. The speculum is what is going to let us see the cervix, which is the lowest part of the womb. So the uh, speculum would be placed on the inside. It would then be opened up by the abortionist and would be used to actually look at the cervix. The cervix only has one job and the job of the cervix is to stay closed until the mom gets to term and then the cervix would start to open and then the baby would be delivered. So in order for the first trimester abortion to be performed, first the cervix has to be seen, which is with the speculum, and then the cervix needs to be stabilized and grabbed. This is a single tooth tenaculum. You can see the points there at the end are sharp. This would be placed to the inside and the cervix would then be grabbed and can then be held and could be controlled. Once the abortionist would have control of the cervix, now he has to start to open the cervix, a process called dilating. This is called a dilator. There's a whole series of about 10 or 12 of these that start off small like this, which are then passed through the opening of the cervix, and each then it's flipped around to the larger size, and then it gets a little bit more open up until you go to a larger dilator like this. And depending on how far along the pregnancy is would determine how large you would have to get the cervix in order to uh, remove the baby. But then this dilator would then open the cervix even a little bit more. Once the cervix has been opened, the womb is now open to the abortionist and the baby has now, long, has now lost its protection from the cervix. For the first trimester abortion, even though the baby has a heartbeat, fingers, toes, arms, and legs, it's not developed enough uh, where it has real strong bones. So the baby, the placenta, the fluid, all of those uh, products are actually removed with a suction device, which we'll also demonstrate. But the suction tubing is hooked up to a suction curette like this or even smaller, depending on how far along the baby is. That suction curette is then placed through the speculum, up through the cervix, and actually up on the inside of the womb where the baby is. So this opening for the suction curette is then up where the baby, the fluid, and the placenta are. Once that is up by where the baby is, then the suction is turned on and the baby, the placenta, and everything else are then brought down through this tubing over into the suction machine. Once that's finished, we talked a little bit about one of the complications being Asherman syndrome. This is a curette. You can see it's you know, sharp on the edges, it's rounded, and the job of this is to actually scrape the lining of the uterus for whatever is left as far as little pieces of placenta and blood clot. So this is passed up in through the cervix, up into the womb, and then around all sides, all the remaining tissue is then scraped out. And then the procedure is finished, the speculum is then closed and is then removed, and then the first trimester abortion is then finished.